Welcome to today's webinar. My name is Himani Arora, working as Senior Software Consultant at Noldis, and I will be your host for the evening. Noldis is the world's largest pure spark scalar company. We are a company of smart engineers working together to deliver high quality reactive products. Today, Prabhat Kashyap, a module lead consultant at Noldis, is going to present a webinar on IO Monads and Scala. Hi Prabhat, thank you so much for taking out your time for today's webinar. The mic is all yours. Let's start with the webinar. Thank you Imani for the great introduction. So hi everyone. So today we'll be talking about Iomonad's side effects and how to overcome side effects. So let's start with agenda first. So today we'll be talking about side effects Referential transparency, the problems and the solution about them, uh, IO Monad, and then we'll talk basically see some demo. So let's start with side effects. So as written in the book Programming in Scala, a method's only act should be to compute and return a variable. And if it is modifies a mutable data structure or variable, uses IO, throw an exception or halt an error. All these things are considered as side effects. So if you had them, so it is the side effect in your program. Also, uh, if the function is showing unpredictable behavior or depending upon some state which causing some unpredictable output, then that is also considered as side effects. But side effects are needed because without them, our program will only do calculations and we often have to write to our databases, integrate with the external system and write to files and read from them. So let's move now to understand what is referential transparency. So referential transparency is basically uh, basically originated from mathematics and got adopted into functional programming. Its main goal is to give the programmer a toolkit to reason about program's behavior. And this concept is related to pure functions. And note, this is not the feature of Scala language, but a complete independent concept. So if you look at the bottom, there is a code snippet which shows a method double which basically doubles whatever uh, you uh, give in the parameter so if you give one it will return you two and if you give two it will return you four so referential transparency says wherever i am using double uh, i can replace it with the value uh, that is coming out of it so if i am using double of two somewhere I can easily replace that value with the 4 without changing the other results. So where it actually breaks. So take a look at this particular example. We have a variable global with, with the value 20 and we have created a method get something which will give you something out of it and then we have reassigning the value that is coming into uh, get something to global and then increasing the global by 10. So above code, even though giving us the value, giving us the output, it is somehow depending upon the global value. So if we call get something again, the result may be differ. So that's how the referential transparency here breaks. And this makes it difficult to reason about what the method does. And obviously it breaks the referential transparency principle. So to avoid uh, side effects in our program, we used future in our programs. I guess many of you uh, know, those who know about uh, Scala side effects and all uh, must have used future in order to wrap the side effects. So here we I have written a short code snippet. So 
it is basically a for comprehension where I have two futures and I am performing a side effect by printing a sentence. So uh, when I run the program, it will give me the result something like this. Pretty much obvious, right? Now let's look into this one. So as a functional programmer, I should be able to move out that future into a variable and use it uh, as many times as I want without changing uh, its outcome. So in this particular scenario, it should be as similar as the previous one. But when we run this, it will only get prints one, one time. And here, let me break it to you that future is not referential transparent and breaks the principle of referential transparency. It will just print uh, the value only once because of it, e its eager evaluation. And here, my friends, we will lose the functional programming concept when we use futures. So now we know uh, those who worked on futures and know that it is monad. So now uh, we, we also know that Scala breaks the referential transparency principle as well. So let's uh, see why we actually need referential transparency in our program. So it makes our program maintainable. The behavior is explicit and expected. Refactoring is obviously less painful and local reasoning is possible with all referential transparency. So now we know and we should also know what is pure function since uh, uh, we have to use pure functions in, in order to be true with the referential transparency principle. So first of all, we should be total, not partial. So assume you have a method get URL. So what should be your output from that? If your output is a string, then that is actually a partial function. Why? Because whenever you enter any string, your function is supposed to give you URL for each and every uh, input and that is not true. Every string is not a URL. So it should either uh, return your URL or something, some other value. We can use different uh, different containers here uh, like option. We can use either, we can use try, but we should we have to use something in order to make it total then there should be no randomness it should be deterministic then obviously no side effects it should be pure no no mutation and uh, since the starting of uh, functional programming we have been taught that there should be no mutation in our program no null uh, that is so obvious no deflection and no exception and actually do not throw exception, use either, use try or use options. Uh, that makes your program much uh, more readable and easy to understand and easy to re reason with. So don't throw exception. And if you are doing, just be sure what are you doing. So now let's look into the IO Monad. So IO Monad is uh, a basically container you can say a container that can perform effects before returning a value of any type so here as you can see there is a, a io monad uh, which is taking some value or a type of value a so whenever it gets uh, when we use this so it performs the effect and uh, returns the value of type a so IO values are pure, immutable, and it preserves referential transparency. And since it gives us all of these things, we it is reusable as well. 
and IO is a data structure that represent just the description of a side effectful computation. So whenever you see some IO monad, so it is for representation that we are using side effects here. Now IO monad can describe synchronous or asynchronous computation that on evaluation yield exactly one result and can end either success or a failure in case of failure flat map chain gets short circuited like your every monad and it can be cancelled but note the capability relies on the user provides the cancellation logic so that is basically a monad now looks let's look into uh, some code snips again so we have a method greet here which is actually performing side effects so which is pretty much obvious we are printing into the console and we are re reading from the console which is kind of io and uh, these all is uh, your side effect and the program r does run well but uh, as a functional programmer you should always avoid this now how we can overcome that particular problem with IO Monad. So IO Monad basically now represent here that some kind of IO is ha happening over there and we are basically sequencing them over monadic chains. So even though uh, if we use this particular code snippet in uh, like distributed computing or multi-threading environment it will al always uh, pre always do operations sequentially so it will first ask for your name and then get the name out of the uh, your console or terminal and then print exactly what the result is so that is io monad for you and uh, now look into the old school future way so again uh, we used to have side effects inside our future so if we do si similar kind of thing with future it will just get print enter your name and rest of the things will not work because uh, it will run on the different threads which you cannot uh, have that on the basically on the main me method and you have to write so much boilerplate in order to do so and uh, if not it's very hard or impossible to do so now let's look into uh, one example some uh, complex code where we can use our uh, io monad so it's exactly the similar example as previous one where uh, I am having uh, uh, print line and getting the line out of uh, my console so here I have created one algebra in out of type uh, a or which is generic type and then the companion object in which we have two different case classes uh, or one case class and one case, case objects which represent if I give print line with the line it will just print onto the console and if there is a get line it will get uh, or fetch the line out of the terminal and then we have two methods uh, print line and get line so here i am using free monad so if you uh, familiar with free monads lift f will just lift uh, this particular piece of code to free monads so this is basically how i created uh, a monad out of it now in order to use that i have some concrete implementation of uh, uh, the code so i have created console interpreter and extend it with in out which is my monad and uh, using the variable which is transforming to it to i so do not worry about this particular uh, symbol this is just for transformation it's the part of cats library so here we are using cats library and then i have a method which is printing the line and getting the line and here i am using iomonad so now 
let's look into the code uh, let me move my code here so as you can see I have few uh, let me explain expand a bit uh, so in and out which is simple as I explained then we have the program actually the free monad program uh, here I am I am having uh, the print line, the get line, and again printing the line, which is uh, same as using uh, print and performing the side effect. But we are doing that in uh, um, monadic form now. And then I have given some concrete implementation where we we doing something uh, so console interpreter as I explained you uh, previously so don't worry about uh, this particular error so this is just a fight between uh, IntelliJ and your basically cats library so uh, now let's uh, move further and try to run this particular program so I have this program free monad program again so let me show you the program so the program is here now I have a free monad which is the value here uh, it, it is of type free of IO to unit so here as you can see it's free IO to unit then I am folding it to console interpreter okay now let's try to run this particular program okay so as you can see it is prompting uh, for my name and if I just enter my name so it will give me the reserve hello and with the name so now let's look into uh, some interesting thing about this so even if even there is some side effects we can write unit test cases for that I know that some people don't like unit test cases they directly want to go to uh, integration test cases but here we have here we have uh, some unit test cases for the folks that like uh, unit test cases so I started with creating a method interpreter which inputs take two inputs input and output uh, basically one is a mutable stack another one is a list buffer so I am using the ID here uh, which will just uh, give me the just shows that it will it will uh, provide some kind of uh, value so then I have IO print line which is same and here I am adding that particular line into my list buffer and whenever I am calling the get line it is basically pops the value out of the stack so uh, to write the unit test cases I have uh, used uh, started with the two empty uh, one empty stack and one empty list buffer and then push some input from uh, into my stack and then give one the same uh, program or the function that which is which is which is written above uh, to the free monad program now when I give the run this program so input size should become zero because I'll pop out pop the value out of it and the output should be something like enter your name and hello Prabhat as uh, per our program so is, as you can see here hello your name and so let me try to run this particular test code so as you can see the test pass and this particular code is uh, uh, referenced from a great talk on free monad uh, so now let's try to uh, look into some uh, more example so let's see uh, one example of IO Monad for copying file so basically what we'll do we'll have a origin of file and have a destination of file so we'll be copying 
फ्रॉम द ओरिजिन इन टू द डेस्टिनेशन सो लेट स्टार्ट सो वी हैव टू गो टू द कोड अगेन सो हेयर इज आर कोड लेट मी क्लोज दिस डाउन यू कैन फाइंड दिस पर्टिकुलर कोड इन माई repository but uh, this particular piece of code is also available on the cats effect tutorial so i have started with uh, uh with my first uh, uh method which is copy so i should have uh one i should have one uh destination file and one origin file so now let me start with uh, writing some more so don't worry i'll not be writing the entire code uh, i'll just uh, uh, move the code uh, from my git commit so just give me a second i'll just uh, let me move into my directory okay i am up so let me move to the next one so as you can see now i have uh, added some methods in which i am using resource which will uh, basically manage the resource for me so here i have created or get the file input stream uh i taking f file and uh, wrapping that into io and then uh, closing it and if some uh, error is coming i'm just uh, suppressing this error with the uh, uh, io unit so similarly i created output stream and then uh, chained them into output and input stream so i'll have both of them so let's move next by adding the implementation of copy method so here i'll just call them and uh, transfer the value from in to out so as you can see in in we have input stream and in out we have output stream and we have also introduced one transfer method uh, where we have again input stream and output output stream uh so that function will be using in our uh, copy so now let's uh, uh, give the implementation to our transfer as well so now as you can see uh, in uh, in my transfer i am using one more method which is transmit which is taking input stream and output stream uh, buffer array and accumulator in order to copy the file and this is basically this particular piece of code is responsible for writing uh writing the data from one file to another file so now my file operator is ready so let's start with the application so here i have a copy file app which is extended by io app i have created the object of it and instead of main here i am using Uh, run which is provided by io app so it produces the io to run as an app okay so now we have uh, this particular piece of code uh, so starting with the io unit getting the files i am using the file here uh, as it is because i don't want to run it through uh, the terminal so just gave the absolute path of origin and destination and then just called the copy me method uh in count it's basically giving you the long of uh, number of bytes that has been copied so that's basically it about uh, uh the copying file using one program using io monads now let's get back to our exam slides so there is one more thing bracket here so as you see you have seen i have used resource and uh, uh if i want to use the bracket i can do it through th this particular piece of code uh i can have input and output tuple and then uh as you can see above we i have two different uh, 
uh, IO monads here for in file input and output stream, then bracket them and use the transfer method and then close them. So this is this particular code is okay uh, until my IO output IO doesn't go bad. So if it does go bad, uh, my in input IO will stay open and that is uh, one of the problem that can happen with bracket. So the safer way is to use uh, output IO inside the uh, input IO. So that will make that uh, uh, safer. But uh, again, the code will be much more readable uh, if we use a resource and uh, it is preferred to use a resource whenever we are using uh, multi we are working with multiple resources so that's it now let's move on to the next part which is cancellation so cancellation is a powerful but non-trivial cat effect feature in cat effects uh, some io instance can be cancelable cancelable meaning that their value evaluation will be aborted and if programmer is careful and alternate IO task will be run under cancellation for example to deal with the potential cleanup so uh, IOs created with resource use can be cancelled and you guessed it right so in our code we did use uh, resource dot use and that is cancelable so the cancellation will trigger the execution of the code that handles the closing of the resource and in our case that would be clo that would close the both stream so far so good but what happens if the cancellation happens while the streams are being in used obviously data corruption so it, this could lead to the data corruption as a stream where some threads is writing to the same time being closed by the another thread so to prevent such uh, data corruption we must use some kind of concurrency control mechanism right uh, we can ensure that no stream will closed while io returned by transfer is evaluated so uh, a semaphore is that which we can use here for controlling the concurrency uh, uh, we in the semaphore ha we have number of permit and it is acquired by dot acquire block and if no permit is available uh, until the release is called on the same semaphore so we'll be using semaphore with a single permits now let's look into the code uh, once again so let's let me go back to uh, my previous example so here uh, when we talk about copy so we'll be starting with one only acquiring one uh, and uh, here uh, leaving these two unchanged uh, by input stream we are using the guard with permit and if uh, it does it is acquired it will not get cancelled same goes with output stream and similarly with we, we are providing uh, the guard in through through input out stream into the in stream and out stream let me go back to the slides so the dot with permit method acquires one permit run the io given and release the permit we could also acquire and then release the semaphore explicitly but with permit it is more idiomatic and ensure that the permit is released even if effects run fails so here as you can see we have used a guard now so that's all basically for uh, this <laughs> presentation i have used some references uh, from cats effects obviously uh, the complete example was from cats effect tutorials uh, you can take a look into the 
documentation it is really well done uh, I have also used uh, some images from I am pure pics and I have used uh, some of the uh, examples from my fellow developers uh, given talks so that's all for today thank you if you have any question mail me at prabhat dot kashyap at the rate knowledge dot com or you can follow me at twitter at prabhat kashyap underscore that's all for today guys thank you